name is Sean Seastead. Uh, I'm going to tell you a story that's uh, part of a project of World Park. Uh, some of you have seen bits and pieces of this in the past, but this is a continuation of that story. Um, we're going to be working with bears. I'm presenting about my behavior with, uh, with bears, how they're self-medicating. And humans are actually using how to use medicine sometimes by observing animals. <clears throat> so this is an example of the bears. Uh, my Navajo informants and friends uh, told me legends that they had that the bear had originally taught humans how to use plants for medicine. And uh, uh, I thought that that was very interesting. Uh, one of the main plants they taught that were used was Legastrum porterii, known as Osha. And uh, this plant is one of the most treasured uh, botanicals in the Rocky Mountains uh, for every tribe that lives near uh, these populations. It's a broad spectrum medicinal plant, and as you can see here, uh, it has many uses. But notice particularly the use as an anti-arthritic. It's very good for arthritis because it's important to this story. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Thanks. Um, uh, like I said, every, every uh, uh, culture that lives near this uses it for medicine. And most of them, in fact, all of them I've ever encountered, considers it their most important medicine. And as I travel around through the years, I noticed that the word Nabi or Osha, Bu or Osho, many of these translated into having the word bear in their language. And so that really fascinated me. And so I decided to do <coughs> controlled uh, biological studies on the behavior of bears and the behavior of the, uh, uh, of the people as well. And so what we're going to be looking at is two different things, zoopharmacognosy. This is animals knowing how to use plants uh, for medicine in this case and biomimicry, and that's the parallel use of, uh, uh, of a, uh, a plant, in this case, OSHA, for, uh, by both humans and bears. And we're going to look at these various characters up here. Uh, the upper group is really typical eating behavior. The middle group, the rubbing, is really unusual. This is more characteristic of a non-food eating behavior. And so we watch very closely for this. And then here's some of the third group down here, uh, the roaring and the tongue wiggling. These are associated sometimes with, uh, with uh, uh, unusual behavior, such as self-medication. Uh, what we found out is that, I, this is reporting on two bears right here. And here we have a female bear. Notice that she is using uh, many of these behaviors much more than the male bear, uh, paw. So the female bear is moth, the male bear is paw. And so, uh, as we go on in the story, you'll see why uh, we think she's doing this. Uh, we're also looking at the parallel behaviors. We, uh, this is the, the biomimicry. And what we find is that the Native American people that I work with are performing the same behaviors as the bear is performing in many of these spectra, including the rubbing parts right over here. Um, well, they are not roaring, however. We don't see they roaring like humans when they're using ocean. So there's some interesting exceptions. Uh, let's take a look at some of my bears. This is a giant black bear. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, a, a black bear versus Americanus. Uh, this bear, they, what they typically do is they hold OSHA and they kind of uh, uh, ponder for a little bit. Then they hunker down and begin chewing on the OSHA. I also work with brown bears. Uh, these large brown bears also love OSHA. And, uh, and I've worked with them 10 years before this. Um, but what they do is they'll hold the OSHA in their, in their mouth and they'll kind of ponder, I call it pondering. They'll kind of look off into the distance for a short while before they do this behavior. And then what you'll see them doing, uh, very, the Native Americans call this praying, um, but what they then do is they chew on it, they make a paste out of the OSHA, and then they take the OSHA and they rub it all over their fur, all over their bodies, and, and especially in the front. And, and then they'll shake their head vigorously, creating an aerosol. Then they'll walk under the aerosol, it percolates down through their fur, and they rub it against uh, rocks and trees. It's a wonderful behavior to observe. Uh, and here's one of the rubbing. Uh, and so I'm going to show you some of my original footage uh, using these two bears. This bear over here is Ma. She's a female bear. This is Pa. And uh, he's the male bear. They live together at this point, and I've worked with them for years, for 25 years in a fairly dysfunctional relationship where they, she will not let him near her, and they're roaring at each other, and they're you know, having kind of a, a, a tough time uh, surviving their, their uh, location. So now I'm going to show you some footage. This is very early footage, 1990s. I've repeated this after about 10, 
10 years, uh, and uh, here we are yeah. in a captive situation. Very good job. So, we to fly on his boat here. Nice. This is This is Ma. This is Pa. We're going to throw a large piece of ocean into Ma and observe her behavior, and then afterwards we'll throw a piece into Pa. We just threw in the ocean. She grabbed it. Pa would like to be still. Get a little closer. Get a little closer. Get a little closer. arthritis, really serious chronic arthritis. And uh, so she came down to me, begged for some more. I couldn't give her any more uh, because it's a controlled experiment. But Pa, to everybody's astonishment, took his piece, went down on his knees, and crawled up to her and offered it to her. The bear keeper said, oh my god, I've never seen anything like this before. And I, you know, I was shocked myself. She grabbed that piece, ran back <laughs> to the top, ripped it all over herself, and she came back down uh, in a little bit, and uh, she uh, was very much more happy, and she came down and licked him on the nose. <laughs> and I actually have a picture of that for you. <laughs> and there's Pa still on his knees, and they really nuzzled for quite a while there. It was, uh, it was really a very touching moment. And at this point, the, the bear keeper shed a few tears. He'd never seen anything like this before. Anyway, so what are we looking at? Um, interpreting this, interpreting the data on the chart, what we see is that Ma, in the dark and the blues, is rubbing a lot more than, than Pa is. Uh, and only Ma is rubbing against different objects. Uh, there is quite a bit of burring from both of them, but the non-food-like behavior really is dominant in this picture than the food use behavior. Quite interesting. Another thing that's come out quite recently is some of the pharmacological well-known activities on mammalian tissues. And here we have phthalates, which are antibacterial, antifungal, that could benefit a bear. We have analgesic effects, well that certainly would help Ma to take away pain. Um, antibiotic, antiviral, antifungal, even insecticidal, and notice at the top, however, a few months ago, one of my students discovered uh, inadvertently that OSHA contains oxytocin. 
Well, this is a fantastic uh, discovery, in my opinion, because uh, oxytocin is now well known for enhancing cooperative behavior and trust among the animals. And that change of behavior from before, which you saw that the bears had, to after is extremely noteworthy and, uh, and unusual. It happened very quickly. Quite an amazing uh, behavior. And so what do we learn from this? We learned that the Native American le legends were confirmed in biological basis. Uh, that the bears probably had, in some respect, taught the, 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 uh, the bears had taught the Native Americans. Um, but then began a quest in my heart at least to observe this in the wild because all this was captive behavior. And so that's what the next part of my story is about. Um, so what I wanted to do is to film in wild conditions. So again, I'm just going to be working with Ursus Americanus at this point. I'm a very respected bear. Uh, I set up these uh, reconnaissance cameras here, the one, the gray one over there. Uh, and I chose those because they can last 10 to 30 years sometimes. They last a very long time. And the bears may only perform this rare behavior once in a lifetime. More than that, it might be extremely uh, diverse where it might perform this rare behavior. And so I set up four arenas. This is in my ranch right above, uh, uh, right, right above here is where we're filming bears in this, this upper area here. And the other thing is the bears, you know, uh, there's such a huge area that they might perform it in that I was really hoping that I would see anything in the next 10 or 20 years. Uh, the first bear that came through was a medium-sized black bear. It came through the arena last fall. Um, and just a few days before coming here, I was had something astonishing really happened. Um, this, uh, uh, a very large bear came into one of my arenas where the ocean was and went right up to an ocean plant. I'm going to show you the footage of this. And you can see what he did. He, if you think about the chart, uh, it really did uh, quite a few things that we consider significant. This won't play. Oh, it didn't play. Hold on a second. Let's try this again. Okay. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, I don't know. We're having a technical problem here. Um, usually when I tap this, it plays. It always has. Ah. It's playing, it's playing. It's playing. Oh, it's playing up here. Yeah. It's not playing <laughs> on mine. That's weird. Okay, so he just went over and he ate a large piece of, uh, of, of OSHA fronds. Two, turns out two large fronds of OSHA. Um, then he went behind the tree and did something. We do not know what it did. Although I have lots of cameras, I did not have a camera behind that tree. So we're going to add one. <laughs> anyway, he came back out, wandered around. I mean, this is a small, typical arena. Ocean is very abundant above my ranch. And uh, uh, he came back into the arena again after leaving. And look what he does. He begins a rubbing behavior. This was astonishing, folks. I, I had really, I couldn't believe that this was happening. Uh, just after a few days, uh, having my cameras out in the spring. Uh, but, uh, it looks like the potential for, uh, well, we have now confirmed for the first time in science that bears are doing a rubbing behavior with OSHA in the wild. So I can't believe how lucky I was. Uh, we went back to the exact site, found the exact fronds of OSHA that they had, that the bear had eaten, and so it confirmed that that is OSHA, of course. Uh, there's the stems still remaining there. So I'm going to talk about this a little bit in the context of World Park Project. Um, what we're trying to do, as I've said, is restore our planet back into a healthy global ecosystem. It's a gradual project where little by little we're going to try and uh, protect uh, what nature we have. There's only about 10% of our planet that still is in a healthy condition. And uh, what we're doing is proposing a scientific way to restore nature globally. And uh, we just learned that the parks are not going to work. The parks have much higher, we, you know, the paradigm of scientists today is you take nature, you uh, put it into a protected area, and the, in these protected areas, what you do is, uh, uh, that's, that's how the last part of our planet is going to be uh, uh, maintained on Earth, but it's not working. The problem is, and uh, Sale and, and Mora reported on this recently, is that the entire planet is, um, uh, is experiencing, uh, within these parks, they're experiencing much higher uh, 
levels of extinction. And so what we're proposing is we take these 10% of natural areas and treat them as centers of a new world park and expand them outward in every direction gradually until nature is, is uh, maintained in a healthy condition. There are many uh, examples of these projects, uh, such as uh, the big open project between Montana and Canada, where we're restoring an enormous area where the wild bison herds uh, can live. There's a great green wall in Africa, and uh, they're gradually, very, very optimistically, hoping to take back the Sahara Desert and turn it back into the Sahara Forest. Um, also, uh, Prince Charles here has a metal restoration project where he's connecting native lands uh, to other native lands using metals and then my their project. Uh, the nice thing about this is it honors the world's conservationists. They've worked so hard, we've all worked so hard to protect biodiversity. Um, and uh, it's a really sustainable solution. It also honors our indigenous people uh, who have nestled themselves into nature and where those worldviews really have a positive uh, biological effect. Um, and so, really, it looks like the bear, the project this we're working with here, is very effective in protecting uh, nature. Uh, not only do they spread seeds and berries, they reduce herbivory, and what they do is this keeps streams running, keeps streams alive. And overall, what we see happening is that uh, uh, there's a triad. There's kind of a cycle between bears, humans, and OSHA that's keeping nature healthy. And that this system, we need to keep systems like this alive because it really is uh, very positive uh, in, in our planet. Um, and uh, so I'm going to call this an ethnobiological cycle where we have zoopharmacocracy, we have biomimicry between bears, oceans, uh, ocean, and humans. And I'm sure we're going to find cycles like this in many different uh, areas. Uh, so really the bears are protecting our global ecosystem. Both scientists and indigenous people believe that the bears are an indicator of a healthy ecosystem. And, uh, and so bears all around the world, many of whom I've worked with, uh, the giant pandas, I've worked with polar bears, um, are all doing this. They're helping, helping to keep our planet alive and helping to even expand the health of our planet. And so, you know, just to address what we're talking about at this conference, what is our message and how are we getting it across? Well, I'm hoping we keep this idea of World Park as maybe a tiny element of this, because after all, you know, really, these are where we get our medicines, and uh, uh, so that's, that's my story. Now, let's take a look.